The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey guys, good morning. How is everybody across the country? I am so excited for this presentation. Um, we're going to start a little backwards today. For those of you that are new on the webinar, this is normally the Stark and HomeSmart social media series that we've been doing for the past five weeks, and we welcome you to continue for the next five weeks. Uh, the link that you have for this webinar will work, and if you're already part of the um, social media series, awesome. So my name is Mike Bjorkman. I'm the broker owner of HomeSmart NCG. We're just north of Los Angeles by Six Flags Magic Mountain. We talk a lot about where we're at because there's so many people um, from all over the country on this. Now, Deanna Miller is our Stark social media trainer and my personal social media manager. She's on another airplane. She travels the country all the time. So it's hard sometimes for all of us to be in the same place at the same time. So what I wanted to do is people ask all the time, why in the world do you do this, Mike? Well, honestly, it's to help good agents like you guys across the country uh, to know a little bit about HomeSmart. We got a new location in Northridge, California, and, uh, you know, we just we just like to broadcast a few things. Number one, we have four ninety nine transaction fees and uh, all the tools and technology and training you can ever ask for. Simple things, websites, CRMs that are just really high quality. When you do take a listing, it automatically creates a single property website, a virtual tour, automatically uploads it to YouTube, all sorts of good stuff like that. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to kind of get into our program a little bit today. We have uh, Michael Hellickson on the line. Are you there, Michael? I'm going to switch over and give you some controls here. I am here, man. All right. I'm excited to be here. Good morning, man. How's it going over there? Fantastic, fantastic. So let's go to screen two. Now, you were and... just telling me, since so if you guys don't know where Michael Hellickson is, he's in Seattle, and you were telling me there's some pretty good wildfires going on up there? Oh my gosh, we are on fire, literally. I mean, we are burning to the ground. Everything's on fire. In fact, it is so bad, it's the worst on record that we have ever had on record. And what's happening is they're now asking, it's so bad that they're asking for civilian help uh, with putting out these fires. It's it's literally, there's hundreds of fires all over the state right now. Wow, that's crazy. Well, our prayers go out to all you guys and hope you're safe. I wanted to give a little bit of background about you and I. Uh, it's kind of funny. We, we had so much excellent response from your uh, webinar we did two weeks ago, and that was the 31 lead generating ideas that you guys can all watch in our Facebook group, um, Stark and Social Media 10 week series. Get a hold of us, we'll get you in there. But we had so much uh, great feedback, and then people wanted to know a little bit about our history, Mike, and, and why you and I are friends, and where'd we meet, and, and how did we ever come together since I'm in LA and Seattle, so I thought I'd throw it out there. Um, Michael and I met in Dallas at a mixer one time. He came prancing through the party that I was at. And, you know, obviously as an expressive person that's usually running the show in a room, he came in and, and took all my energy away. I couldn't believe it. So I had to meet the guy. I was introduced to him. I found out at the time that he was one of the most top producing real estate agents in the country. And, and you know what? That fascinated me really quick. So obviously uh, I pulled him aside. We talked, we bonded, and we've been good friends ever since. We have a lot of the same marketing ideas. We share a lot of the same ethics with real estate. And we, believe it or not, share uh, hundreds and hundreds of mutual friends across the country. Like I don't know if you've looked, Michael, on who's on this webinar right now, but we have uh, a lot of really powerful coaches from across the country that are friends of ours, uh, sales trainers all over the place. We have our good old asset managers and people that run the banks that we used to work with a lot in the REO days. So we have an incredible audience on this, and we don't want to make you nervous, obviously, with this many people because you got to present this thing. But So anything you want to add before I let you rock this thing, buddy? No, man, no, not at all. I'd, uh, you know, I just appreciate you having me on again, and uh, it's an honor to have all these great folks watching and joining us on the webinar. And it's funny, I keep watching the numbers just tick up. We're getting to the point where I don't know that anybody else is going to be able to get on. But uh, anyway, no, it's uh, it's great. I appreciate you having me. And yeah, we've got a ton of stuff to go over today, um, and so. 
uh, we're going to go pretty rapid fire. I'm not sure how much uh, how much you want to cover before we get started, but I'm ready when you are. It is really important that you talk about yourself because nobody can talk about yourself better than you. But I need for the agents on this that are my local agents that don't know you, they need to know what kind of numbers we're talking about. I'm an active agent. I'm a kick butt agent. I sell over 100 homes a year, Michael. I make over a million dollars a year in just selling real estate sales. And I think I'm pretty awesome. But what the heck does that say in front of me? Regularly listed and sold over 100 homes a month. That makes me nothing in this business. Tell us a little bit about you. <laughs> well, first of all, you are definitely something in this business. You're hitting a massive price point, and uh, frankly, you are killing it, and anyone would do well to follow in your footsteps. Uh, and yeah, you know, we did. We did a lot of production. I don't sell real estate any longer. I'm a full-time real estate coach now, and so my job is to help other people, uh, you know, reach their destiny and, and grow their businesses and build their teams and, and develop a lifestyle that allows them to enjoy great income without... Uh, uh, without having to sacrifice their life. Um, so, you know, 100 homes a month, yeah, that was awesome. Uh, at one point, I know we had uh, over 750 listings. Uh, you know, there's some really cool things that come along with that. We were, without even really trying, we were generating about 617 buyer leads a week, not counting internet leads. Uh, and uh, you know, got that, you know that opened up a lot of doors. You know, got to be on CNBC, Fox, and Dave Ramsey, and back all that kind of stuff. Um, but really that kind of transition, once I got out of real estate, I really started focusing on my coaching business. And uh, so we coach agents all over the country. And, uh, you know, that being said, we're not going to be selling coaching on this webinar or anything. Like that. That's not why we're here. We're here to give you guys great content. And uh, hopefully you'll get something out of this. Now, I want to preface this. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to jump to the next slide. I want to preface this. With uh, you know this information, it really is like a buffet. You're not going to be able to eat everything at the buffet. As much as I try, I, you know, you, you know, I, I never do succeed at that. So what, you, what do you do when you're at a buffet? You take what you like and you leave the rest. And that's what today is going to be like. Uh, some of this presentation is going to be short sale specific. Uh, and some of you are saying, well, we don't do short sales, or there's no short sales out there right now. Well, that's fine, because most of the presentation is not short sale specific, but I did because in parts of the country, particularly with what the stock market's doing right now, all the craziness we're seeing, um, there is uh, there's the potential that short sales could come back. I mean, it's not even potential. They're going to come back. It's just a matter of when, right, Mike? Yeah, well, as a matter of fact, this morning, we might as well tell the story. Right before we jumped on the webinar, <laughs> we have some of the most top producing agents across the country that actually specialize in default and specifically short sales. And we were talking about my opinion, your opinion, and a couple others' opinions on when it's coming back. I say California's got another year. And then, you know, like Mike and those guys in Florida that we were talking to, I'd say they're about two years behind us. And, you know, agents, if you're new or you missed the short sale market last time, I highly recommend you start studying and practicing and getting to know short sales now because before REO come short sales and if we're not prepared for that you know there's there's just no way you can survive in the business and when the market's going down you know nothing nothing is more devastating than just not knowing what to do with short sales or REO and boy am I glad I got in at the tail end and learned all about default so I'm sitting pretty for the next go around but man you know, unless you prepare yourself, it's just, you know, it's not really good. And and for those of you that, uh, you know, work with a lot of buyers, I'll tell you right now, being in this business 24 years, almost 25, listings is the name of the game. Now, if you're not a very strong, confident listing agent, especially when it comes to short sales, you can't get anywhere in this business. You're always going to do two, three, four, maybe five deals a year. But if you really, really want to learn how to just dominate in this business, this listing presentation is awesome. I've seen this listing presentation live or not live, but on DVD that Michael sent to me. And uh, that's kind of what you need to have. And why am I babbling? I got Michael Hellickson on the webinar. Go take over, buddy. <laughs> I love it. You know, I got to tell you, Michael. Mike was talking about timing and and how important it is. And I got to tell you, you know, for me, I got real. I was really fortunate in my business. I had already planned my presentation. And I've been doing a presentation for years that included both retail and short sale. Mike, we're getting some background noise on your end. Um, 
we, but we had a we had a presentation that was, the, and that's what we're going to go over today. That that got all the retail listings in. You know, so I was able to capture retail listings with it. But it also had built into it the ability to transition immediately once I realized, oh my gosh, this is a short sale. I could immediately transition into short sale mode and not skip a beat and still get my presentation done in 37 minutes. Uh, and it's funny because there was an agent in my market, uh, and I don't want to say her name because you know it might embarrass her. But um, you know, uh, she uh, she literally she told me one day she says, you know what, Michael, I think you're crazy. You should stay away from short sales. You have a, you know, no business doing short sales. And I said, you know what? That's fine, and it's funny because she ended up short selling her million, multi-million dollar home about six months later uh, when she couldn't make any money because guess what? The short sales took over the market instantly, and uh, and we were busy making just millions of dollars uh, doing retail and short sales. So anyway, 90% of this presentation is retail, so pay close attention. We're going to go fast, um, and if you see the little blue SS in parentheses there, that means that's a short sale specific part of the presentation. Uh, and you want to make sure you're aware of that as we go through. All right, so what are the biggest problems in your business today, right? Pretty straightforward. The biggest problems are lead generation, lead follow-up, and lead conversion. You got to master those three things. You guys that were on the on the th uh, 31 uh, lead uh, generation strategies and sources last uh, time we did a webinar with Mike, you heard me talk a little bit about this. Uh, but the other things are profitability and balance in life. Even once you nail down your lead gen, your follow-up, and your conversion, now you've got to dial in profitability. It's great if you make a ton of money, but I got to tell you, I I know a lot of top agents. I've coached some of the biggest agents in the country. In fact, I've coached about uh, 60 out of the top 200 agents in the country, and uh, and I'll tell you that some of those folks, not all, but a, a handful of those folks, have trouble with their credit cards bouncing when I go to run up for coaching. Well, why? Because they're not focused on profitability. All they care about is making money, making, 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 making more money. And what they don't realize is, look, making money is great, keeping money is better. And not only that, keeping money and having a balanced life, that's where it really meets the road. That's what you really want. And so you want to make sure you're balancing your life in the process. Now, again, I've got to hustle through here. I've got a lot of information to cover, so we're going to move quickly. All right. So once I have leads, what do I do next? So, you know, you're going to go out, you're going to lead generate like crazy. Then what do you got to do? This Here comes the hard part. Oh, my gosh, i got to call them, <laughs> Right. You know, it's great when you go from, you know, in the beginning of your career when you're a young agent, you're doing some prospecting, you're doing some FISBOs and expireds and that kind of thing, and you're making a lot of outbound calls, and you're kind of chasing business in a lot of ways. As you grow your team, as you begin to build out buyer's agents, your lead sources get fully developed, you've got, you know, 10, 12, 15 different lead sources consistently bringing you volume, all of a sudden you go from chasing business to attracting business. And that's that's the goal that you really want to get to. Once you get to the point where you're attracting business instead of chasing it, everything else becomes easy. All of a sudden now you can go from working 60, 80 hours a week to all of a sudden working 30, 40 hours a week and making more money in the process. That's a whole other topic we'll talk about another time. But one of the things that you have to do regardless of where you are in the process is you've got to call those leads back. You've also got to begin with the end in mind. I love this. This is Napoleon Hill, right? Well, what does that mean? What does that mean, begin with the end in mind? You've got to know your goal. What am I after? When I call these people, what am I trying to do? I'm not trying to educate them. Let's understand that. We've got to understand what, what's not our goal, right? It's not to educate them. It's not to get their commitment to do business with us at this point. What is the goal? It's not to pre-qualify them for a short sale or for any other kind of listing. It's not, you know, it's not to make sure that they're for sure going to list with me. Our goal right now on this initial follow-up call is one thing, and that is to set the appointment. That's all that matters. Now, as soon as you set that appointment, what do you need to do? Hang up the freaking phone. Oh, my gosh. If I had a nickel for every time, I'd, 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 sometimes I do whisper coaching where I'm listening to my clients' calls as they're making their calls. And if I had a nickel for every time one of my coaching clients, if I caught him, just be in the sales prevention team. I mean, hello, I know your team's done it at some point. Everybody's has, right? Don't you hate it when you're listening to somebody on your team and they're literally talking themselves out of the appointment while they're on the phone with somebody? It happens all the time. As soon as you get that appointment, hang up the phone. Super important. All right, now, what do we want to do as far as conversion goes? Conversion is, you know, we've got the appointment. We get out there. <clears throat> now we got to convert it. So how do I, are we going to convert from a lead to an appointment? So what do I got to do? I got to follow up, 
follow up, follow up. Those are the three most important things. I cannot say this enough. You cannot follow up enough. You can't. And if you, the second you think, well, I'm going to just piss that person off if I follow up too much, get over it. You're not going to piss them off, especially if you use my favorite phrase, which is, I just want to make sure I'm not dropping the ball on my end. You should be writing this down right now. I just want to make sure I'm not dropping the ball on my end. That's what you need to say every time you follow up with somebody. I promise you, 99% of the time, you're going to get a positive response when you use that phrase. Again, I just want to make sure I'm not dropping the ball on my end. And then follow up like crazy. All right, now let's talk about preparing for the listing appointment. This is important. You know, a lot of people... Need, you, first of all, you got to understand your style, right? You got to understand: Am I, a, a, you know, a, a, a comeback close kind of guy? Am I a soft close? You know, what am I? Personally, I'm an assumptive close kind of a person. Uh, you know, my belief is that if I walk in there, I'm going to walk in assuming you're going to do business with me. Why wouldn't you do business with me? I'm the best there is. And by the way, if you don't think you're the best there is, start thinking you're the best you, that you, there is. To quote Ben Affleck in the movie Boiler Room, you need to act as if. Act as if. What does that mean? I need to act as if I'm already the best. Even if you're not, if you don't feel like you're the best yet, act as if you are. Get up in the morning. Do those affirmations. Look in the mirror. Tell yourself positive things. Tell yourself you're the best there is. And you know what? Be the best there is. So mine is an assumptive style. Now, as I'm preparing for the listing appointment, I look at most agents will over-prepare for the listing appointment. So they get stuck in what's called analysis paralysis. They got to have charts and graphs and statistics and all this information. Oh, let me show you all the pictures of your neighbor's homes and yada, yada. Give me a break. You are spending way too much time preparing for your listing appointment. Listen, I was doing literally anywhere from 5 to 12 listing appointments a day on my work days, which allowed me to cut my work time in way, way short. I ended up at my, at my peak, I was doing a four-day work week. I was doing that three weeks a month, so I was working 12 days a month maximum, maximum, and I was listing 50 to 75 houses. Guys, you can do this too, uh, and especially those ladies that are online, you guys are even better. When women really dial this in, they're 10 times better listing agents than the guys are, so I hope you're all listening because you can all beat this up badly on these listing appointments. But anyway, don't get stuck in analysis paralysis. Now, others, they fail to prepare at all, and they just kind of simply wing it. Well, don't do that, all right? You've got it. There's a balance to be found. So the first step in preparation is, again, to begin with the end in mind. What is my goal? What's my goal when I'm on this listing appointment? I have one goal, and that's it, and that's to list the property. That's it. That's all I care about. My goal is to list the home. I don't care about anything else. That's my goal today. Once I have the list, I can talk about all the other stuff. I don't care if it sells at this point. I don't care if I sell it or somebody else sells it. I don't care about any of that stuff. All I care about is getting that listing agreement signed, and I'll deal with everything else later. All right, so what do you need to have for the appointment? This is what you got to have. This is, And by the way, nailing the listing starts with how you set it up on the call, with this, you know, how you set that appointment up, and then it continues through the preparation for the appointment, and now it's, what do I need to bring on the appointment? Well, you got to have some tactical gear, right? What is that? i got to have the proper attire. Well, what is proper attire? Well, for men, you need to have slacks and a tie. Oh, my gosh, I know. I can see it already. Well, Michael, I'm in California. California, <laughs> yay. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Dude, I know you love this, Mike. Dude, I, I get so tired of hearing, oh, Michael, I'm in Hawaii. I wear a, a Aloha shirt and Bermuda shorts. Dude, do it whatever you need to. You need to dress it up a little bit. Listen, I, there was a guy, Mike, you you probably know him. Alex uh, was a, is a buddy of mine who's in California. Uh, was has been a coach for years and years. And, and I'll tell you what. He doesn't wear a tie on his appointments, but you know what he does? He wears jeans and a nice button-up shirt and a jacket, like a suit coat type jacket. So at the very least, he's dressing it up well beyond what most agents in your market are doing. For me personally, I think, guys, if you're on my team, you're wearing a tie. Now, that's in Seattle. Now, if you're in Hawaii, do I think it's permissible to wear an Aloha shirt and a pair of Bermuda shorts? No, I don't. Do I think it's permissible to wear a nice polo, uh, maybe a Tommy Bahama and a pair of slacks? Yes, as long as you're wearing nice dress shoes with it, not flip-flops. But you need to be dressed 
at least a couple of notches above what your competitors are addressing on these appointments as. So did you want to jump in on that, Mike? Yeah, well, there's two things. There's a, it's kind of funny. Julie's on the call. Julie is uh, in charge of career services for our office. And, you know, at some point you've been in the business a long time. So I'm doing training to my agents and I'm in flip flops and a button up shirt, nice shorts. And, and she's, she's getting to the point where she's like, has comfort with me. And she goes, Mike, maybe you could suit up a little bit. And, you know, I felt bad after she said that. Cause I always was a big Mike Ferry guy and he said, always wear a suit. And then once I started wearing a suit to training, the agents were coming up to me and actually saying, gosh, you look good. You look professional. And so, and then, you know, again, we talk about our friends all the time on these calls. And one time I was, we were in Philadelphia going to one of our uh, banks and I asked Jesse Zagorski, I said, Jesse, what should we wear today? You know, it's kind of a, it's kind of interesting weather. And he always said what you said, always dress one or two notches above your clients. So what you just said, ring a bell really good. So we can't beat this to death. We have too much time, to, too much stuff to go over. But yes, I agree with you. Yeah, that's totally true. You know, and, and, and I love Jesse. He's a great guy. But, you know, my thing was anytime I traveled for REO, for example, everybody knew I was the guy that always wore a tie. Always. Everywhere we went, I was one of the very few. It, it, it was you know, the, there was a, just a small handful of people that would wear a tie all the time, and I was one of them. Let me tell you, that was a, a positive way to be remembered. Uh, now, women, you need to be conservative and professional, and, and I want you to listen very carefully to this, ladies. Remember what we are, and more importantly, what we are not selling here. Okay? All right, enough said. You guys get that, right? All right, very important. Dress conservative and professional. We need to look like uh, real estate agents, not that other stuff out there. All right. Uh, camera, lockbox. You got to carry these things in with you on the appointment. Very important. If I'm gonna, if I, if my goal is to list the house, why would I not take the list, the lockbox into the appointment with me? It cracks me up. How many agents go into an appointment and they don't have a camera or they don't have a lockbox or both? I'm thinking to myself, you have got to be kidding me. What, what are you doing? Are you just going over to the chit chat? You hoping to have tea and crumpets? Come on, get in there and work. Your job is to go list that house. Bring what it takes to list the house. By the way, you need four blue ink pens. Now, wait a minute. Why four? Why do I need four blue ink pens? I need one for me. I need one for Mr. Seller. I need one for Mrs. Seller. And I need a spare in case I run out of ink in one of my pens. Because we're all going to be signing stuff and filling stuff out at the same time at some point. Now, here's the interesting thing. I'm a numbers guy. I am as analytical as they come. I pay attention to the little things. And I will tell you that carrying four blue ink pens into every appointment, that saves me eight minutes on the appointment. Now, eight minutes may not sound like a big deal to you, but if I'm trying to go on six appointments in a day, eight minutes is all of a sudden a very big deal. And that means now I can go on an extra one or two appointments a day and get home at the same time I would have got home to be with my family. So it does matter to me. Carrying four bluing pins, to me, means more money and more time with my family. And that's important to me. All right, business cards. Carry your business cards with you into the appointment. Uh, and by the way, I never carry business cards. Like out and about, if somebody asks me if I have a business card, the answer is always no. Why? Because I want to get their contact information because I know they're not going to follow up with me. The listing appointment is an exception to that. I want to make sure that they've not only got my business card, but I want to make sure they've got my business card stuck to a magnet that they can stick on their fridge. Uh, and from a branding standpoint, you'll see my sign here in a few minutes. Uh, but my business card and my sign are one and the same. They look exactly the same. There is no difference uh, other than the IVR number is not on my business card. So very important. Uh, I want to have my market analysis. Now, my market analysis and your idea of a market analysis are two probably very different things. I'm going to show you what I mean in just a second here. I want to make sure I've got my listing packet with me. Very important. Uh, and then what should be in my listing packet? All right, here we go. I need to have my listing appointment checklist. This is absolutely mission critical, most important piece of paper other than the actual listing agreement itself. This is the most important piece of paper in my packet. I've got to have that listing appointment checklist because it ensures. Well, let me ask this. Hey, Mike, you with me? Yep, now I am. Hey, Mike, let me ask you this. The last time you, you fly around a lot, right? Yes, sir. All right, so last time you got on a plane, you think that pilot had a checklist when he started that plane up? I sure hope so. I, I was just going to say, I sure hope so. <laughs> you know, now, you wouldn't want to get on a plane if the guy didn't have a checklist, would you? 
No, absolutely not. And this listing appointment checklist that you use, I stole it from you a couple of years ago, and I love it. <laughs> it matters. You know, I mean, and it really it, it ensures that you cover every single thing you're supposed to, that nothing gets forgotten, and that all of their questions I – mean, the listing appointment checklist is magical. I mean, and it, and it there's, there's very few silver bullets in this industry. The listing appointment checklist is one of them. If you don't have a listing appointment checklist, you are screwing up on your listing appointments, plain and simple. Um, so I'm going to give you the tools today to develop your own. Uh, I have one that I use that my coaching clients use as well. Um, you know, a lot of times my coaching clients will take mine and they'll kind of tweak it to fit them. Uh, but in essence, really, there are some very specific things that need to be covered on every single listing appointment. And I don't care what part of the country you're in. I don't care what kind of listing it is. There are things that need to be covered in every listing appointment. That, and if you'll do that, you will set expectations properly for uh, you know the time that it is listed, which means you'll have an easier time dealing with that seller. You'll also have a better chance of getting that seller to work with you, which is massively important, obviously. All right, so I want to have my property profile. This is the little printout, the, the two-page printout from the, uh, the county assessor's office or whatever, uh, or the title company. Now, one of the reasons I want this is because a lot of times what I see at the property is different than what's on that property profile. That's important because there could be discrepancies. Maybe they did an addition that didn't get recorded. And I want to know this kind of stuff because if I get out there and I notice something like that, I want to deal with it right away rather than waiting until we've got an offer. Now, I'm not going to deal with it necessarily right then and there. I'll probably have a conversation with the seller about it very briefly, but I'm not going to dive deep into fixing it until after I've got it listed. All right, the one to two line active sold and expired printout. This is my market analysis, by the way. This is what I do. I don't need a bunch of charts and graphs and all this other stuff. Uh, now, if it's super easy to print out and you got to, and you really feel like you've got to have it, then that's fine. If it's just automatically printed out from your multiple, but do do not spend any time at all printing that kind of garbage out. It's a waste of time. So all I need to see is one or two lines. I really need to know address, bedrooms, bath, square footage, and price. That's really what I need to know about a house. If I have that information on a bunch of houses in the area, whether they're active, sold, or expired, if I have that information on all of those threes, I can pre predict the selling price of this home within 1%. Would you agree with that, Mike? <laughs> you keep catching me on mute. Absolutely. I, I can't believe I mean, it's analytical. You're not going in with charts and graphs, and I know what that boils down to is us studying personality styles and understanding, and, you know, the fact that you can go in there uh, without a full book, you know, that's one of the things I hate was taking an hour to comp out a house. It doesn't take that long, and most of the time, the other agents have priced it out for you already. Yeah, you know, here's a great thing, Mike. I don't even do, when, when, I, when I was going on my listing appointments, I mean, think about the volume of information that had to be prepared for me. Uh, you know, I had my listing packets, I had all the comps and all this stuff, and I'd be on 6 to 12 appointments a day. That's a lot of work, right? So you're thinking, if that's going to take somebody an hour to do a presentation, that's a full-time job just to get me ready for my listings every day. Well, guess what? It doesn't take an hour. It takes five minutes. If you do it right, it takes five minutes. And I don't do it. I had my listing coordinator do it. And literally, she would she would put all that information together. It'd take her five minutes to pull the comps. She'd stick it in the folder, and away I go. Now, again, you're right, Michael. Mike, there's different personality types. Some of them want to have you know charts and graphs. Some of them want to see a marketing, uh, you know, a, a home. You know, here's your marketing plan, all that kind of stuff. And yes, I will have some of that kind of stuff with me, but I won't have charts and graphs specific to their house. I might have some charts and graphs that are, you know, part of my market, my my marketing plan. I've got a 71 point marketing plan that I would carry with me, but I almost never broke it out. Almost never did I ever have to bring that out. And if they ask me, hey, can I hang on to that? The answer is always no. If you want this, you got to sign the listing agreement, or you don't get it. And, and I never, ever, ever give them that. That's part of the takeaway close. That's a whole other deal. But uh, All right, so I want that one to two line active printing, print, uh, active and sold and expired printout. Uh, I got to have my disclosures, my agency disclosure, my property disclosure, my state disclosures, my hold harmless agreement. I also want to have a I am not a short sale or distressed homeowner disclosure. Uh, depending on what state you're in, this can be a very big deal. Uh, but you really want to have something that says, yeah, I'm not a short sale, I'm not a distressed homeowner. Uh, I want to have my my guarantee. If you guys, Some of you guys are running a guaranteed sale program, and by the way, bravo to those of you that are. 
fantastic marketing tool. Uh, mine was always, I'll sell your home in 30 days or less or I'll buy it. Um, and uh, did very, very well with that guarantee. But you need to have disclosures around that guarantee and they need to either opt in or opt out of that guarantee. But you have to have them sign something that either opts them in or opts them out of that guarantee. Very important. Keep those T's crossed and I's dotted. Um, all right, I got my listing agreement. Obviously, uh, I want my listing input forms. I want my list of frequently asked questions. I've got a seller questionnaire. Now, the seller questionnaire is very simple. It's, you know, uh, hey, tell me those things you would love advertised about your home. Tell me those things you would not like me to advertise about your home. And give me a few words as if you're speaking to a buyer about what you're going to miss most about the home, neighborhood, schools, etc. And uh, it's a very, it's a one-page form, uh, but I have every one of my sellers fill that out, and it really helps me to not piss them off with my marketing. It also helps me be a rock star because they're going to tell me exactly what they want me to market, and if I tailor my marketing around that, all of a sudden they think, man, this guy's on the ball. He listens. He does what he says he's going to do. He's doing it the way we want it done, and, and they're happy, and you have much happier sellers that way. All right. I'm also going to have my short sale packet. This is important. It's really important that even if you're not going on a short sale appointment, you absolutely have to have your short sale packet with you. Why? Because what if you're on an appointment, all of a sudden you realize it is a short sale, and a lot of you are saying, oh, Michael, no short sales in my market right now. Yeah, well, get ready. It's coming, folks. It's going to happen. Mark my words, whether it's today, next week, next year, whatever. In the next couple of years, you're going to see short sales come back heavy, and you need to be prepared for it. Uh, and you don't want to ever be on an appointment and not have everything you need to list the home right now. You should never have to go back to the office for anything. You should never have to go out to your car for everything or anything. Everything should be in your hands right then and there so that you can list the home right then and there every single time, no matter what. All right. Uh, as part of that, I'm going to have, as part of my short sale packet, I'm also going to have an authorization to release payoff information on my short sale specific disclosures. Very, very important stuff. Also, I'm going to want to have my lender packet. Uh, and by the way, in terms of lender forms, I normally carry with me all of the forms for all of the lenders. I want to have that in my hands when I go into the appointment. Again, even if it's not going to be a short sale, doesn't matter. Still want to have that stuff with me so that I, again, am ready for whatever can possibly happen. I've got everything I need right then and there, and there's no excuse for them to sign on the bottom line, and I don't have to come back 10 times to get stuff filled out and signed that I should have dealt with on the first appointment. All right, uh, moving on. So let's talk about the three rules. Uh, actually, I think it's only two rules, but we'll see. It's <laughs> I think I mis mistyped that. Uh, but it's the three rules for every listing appointment. Rule number one, take every listing and take it now. Rule number two, when in doubt, refer, refer to rule number one. <laughs> it cracks me out, man. Uh, Mike, I, I, I wonder how often you hear this. You know, Somebody comes to the office. Hey, uh, you know, these guys want to price their home too high. Should I take the listing? Yep. <laughs> Heck yeah, you should take the listing. Absolutely. Here's why. A sign in the yard beats a sign in the car. <laughs> Many times. <laughs> Would you agree with that, Mike? Yeah, no, I have a story just from uh, last week. I, I listed a property and the seller wanted to list it uh, about 25000 high in the 650000 price range. And I said, you know what, that's that's a little aggressive. Let me do Let me do you a favor. I'll go back and do an appraisal. And I was able to get them to cancel the next listing agreement with the next agent. And then the very next day, we priced it at market value. So sometimes sellers are really aggressive with price, but they need a day or two to think about it. Or you might need a day or two to compile some more information to help them make a better decision. So I've, I've been through that so many times where I've regretted it. And I'm looking at a couple of the agents on my team on this webinar. And right when you started saying that, I started thinking about these times where we absolutely regretted getting a little cocky. So I'm glad you're saying that because it, it, it it's different than what a lot of other trainers are saying, but I, I do like the signs out there. And, you know, obviously, you know, if they're going to be realistic at some point or not. And I try to get that commitment up front. Uh, so glad you brought that up. You know, it's interesting. You know, people ask me, well, Michael, how did you get to 750 listings literally at one time? How, how did I carry 750 listings at one time? And, you know, a lot of those were active. A lot of them were pending. Uh, but, you know, between my actives and pendings, I literally was sitting on over 750 listings. A couple of things you need to think about here. 
one, I didn't get there by being picky about what listings I took. Did I work very hard at setting seller expectations properly? Yes. Did I work very hard at getting my listings priced correctly? Absolutely. Now, what do I do if I've got an absolutely ridiculous seller that says, you know what, I really don't have to sell. I don't really care if I sell. You know, my motive, and it's funny because some of the coaches out there will tell you, if they're not an 8, 9, or a 10 on the motivation scale, don't even go out to the appointment. Oh, my gosh. Talk about the sales prevention team. Quit listening to those guys. Seriously, slap yourself in the face right now and don't ever listen to them again. If somebody's going to be wickedly overpriced on their home, who cares? What does it cost you to put a sign in the ground? What does it cost you to put a lockbox on the house? Here's where the money's at. For every sign you get out there, you should be doing one and a half buyer transactions. I had 750 signs at one point out there. Literally, for every sign you've got in the ground, you should be getting between one and a half and two and a half calls per week per sign. Start doing the math on that. This is free business. You don't have to pay Realtor.com for it. You don't have to pay Zillow for it. You don't have to pay anybody for it. You don't have to buy those leads. They come in for free. And when you do it right, they come in like crazy. You want those signs in the yard. Not only that, here's the crazy thing. At one point in time, some, I see there's some folks from Washington State on the, on the webinar today. Uh, you guys know, back in the day, I had a 15% market share. Me, personally, one guy uh, and my team. We had a 15% market share in Pierce County alone, in one full county. You look at that sign that you've got on your screen right here, that, uh, that, that's my, that was actually my real estate sign. Think about what it would look like if 15% of every one of the signs you drive by was that sign right there. How many phone calls do you think I got? If you're a seller in that market, who do you need to call? Oh my gosh, it, it is absolutely free marketing. Get the house listed. Don't be picky about the listings you take. Uh, now, as soon as I say this, somebody's going to say, well, Michael, what about that pain in the next seller? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I get it. They're one in 100. If you've got a seller that's such a pain in the neck and you're getting it more often than one out of 100, then you're not setting expectations properly. You're not setting boundaries properly. It's your fault they're a pain in the neck, probably not their fault. So if you've got your right systems in place, you're managing your team properly, you're managing your clients properly, uh, and you're providing them with the tools and the feedback and the support that they need, you're not going to have very many pain in the next sellers. All right. Uh, so I just I get really passionate about that. Yeah, you're, you're making my question thing blow up over here because everybody wants to know the details of the 30dayofsale.com and, and everybody wants the checklist. And I, I sure hope at some point on the end of this we can offer some of this stuff out to these people because they're getting a little <laughs> anxious here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I promise we'll definitely uh, we'll give you an opportunity to interact. In fact, uh, we'll even give you an opportunity to get uh, you know at the end of the webinar we'll talk about uh, how to get uh, some of these slides and that sort of thing. So, all right, what, now that I'm prepared, what do I do next? You know, so I'm, I've got all my stuff ready to go on the listing appointment. Well, what's next? Well, 90% of success is showing up. Dude, let me tell you, Mike, have you ever had an agent on your team not show up on time for a listing appointment? Has that ever happened? Oh, my gosh. The, there's nothing worse. Oh, my gosh. It just kills me. I mean, seriously, don't be a moron, folks. All right? You're smart people. You really are. The people on the webinar here are obviously not that guy, right? Don't be that guy. Show up on time. What does that mean? That means show up at least five minutes early. That's when you need to be there. You need to be prepared. You need to, Now, once you get there, you need to photograph. Literally, I'm still sitting in my car. I'm going to photograph my homeowner appointment checklist. And by the way, uh, for 15 years, I used uh, Top Producer, and I had it set up so that my uh, my checklist, I literally could slide blank checklists into the printer. And I say I, my assistant did this, but she would take the blank checklist, she'd slide it into the printer, and she would print out the Top Producer contact record right at the top left corner of it. So now I've got my checklist, and my homeowner's name is printed on that checklist, and now I take a photograph of it. Why? Because that tells me this is the first photograph for that person's home. So that when I hand my camera back to my assistant later that day when I get back from my appointments or first thing the next morning, she swaps out the SD cards and she takes that SD card and she knows which pictures belong to which house. So I don't have to screw around with it. My assistant knows exactly what she's got to do with it and where the beginning and the end of the photos for that home are. How cool is that? Super easy, super simple. All right. 
So now I've done that. I photographed that. I'm going to get out of my car. I'm going to I'm going to walk to the end. I'm going to start photographing the exterior of the home. Now a lot of you are saying, well, wait a minute. You know, I work in upper end homes and I get professional photography and yada. Who cares? I get it. That's great. I think it's awesome that you do that. Mike Bjorkman's sitting there right now. Well, Michael, I do these really cool video tours. And by the way, they are freaking cool. And they're wicked good for marketing. I get it. I'm not saying don't do those things. But do this first. Here's the thing. You need to be able to walk out of there with a signed listing and able to put it on the market the next day. Now, if you're going to clean up marketing or you're going to delay it for a couple of days while you get the photographer and all that in there, fine. Send your assistant out there with them. But trust me, take the pictures now. Very important. It, may, it has a, a, a mental impact, a subconscious impact on the mind of the seller as well. And by the way, it also has a subconscious impact on you. Part of this is programming your brain that I'm getting this listing. All right. Then I'm going to go knock on the front door. I'm going to greet the homeowner. What am I going to say? If it's a referral, I'm going to say, Hey Mike, so glad uh, I'm so glad John referred you to us. Uh, hey, by the way, do you mind if I grab a few pictures before we sit down? And don't wait for an answer. I literally want you to. So you're shaking their hand when you say this, and then with with one hand, and I always keep my camera in my other hand. And so, and I'm sorry, my camera's around my neck. So as soon as I shake their hand, I'm going to let go of their hand, and I'm going to reach for my camera immediately, right then. And I'm going to immediately put the camera to my face and I'm going to photograph the foyer of their home as I'm walking past them. Now, some of you are thinking this is awfully aggressive and it's just not your style. Okay, fine. Do it your way. I'm not telling you you got to do it my way. I'm just saying this worked for me and I was batting 93%. Literally 93% of the time I went on appointments. And I went on thousands of appointments. 93% of the time I got the listing and this is exactly what I did. So if you want to change it up, change it up. No guarantees that you're going to get the same uh, the, the same uh, pull through that I got, the same success rate that I had, but I can tell you this, I was hiring guys, my listing agents that I hired underneath me, I had a 21-year-old kid, never sold a house in his life. I taught him how to do what I'm teaching you right now. He did it exactly like I told him. Guess what? His first month he listed 21 homes. First month. He was averaging over 20 homes a month in his first four months, and he had never sold the house in his life before. Why? Because he just did it. He didn't try and reinvent the wheel. He just did it exactly like I'm teaching to do it right now. So immediately begin taking photos. Uh, you've got to gain control from the second you walk through the door. If you walk in and they take control, it's game over. You've lost. You've lost. Now you're like all the other agents out there, you know, that are going to get 10% of your listings. Good luck. All right. So again, I immediately begin taking those photos. Uh, now, I want to control the environment. This is also very, very important. So I've gone through the house now. I've taken pictures of all the rooms in the house. And this is important, by the way. You have to do this ahead of time because what I don't ever want, I don't want to be sitting at the table and they say, oh, well, we can't list at that price. You haven't seen our bathroom. We have this imported Italian tile in the bathroom. And it's like, all this perfectly beautiful mosaic tile, and it's different than everybody else's in the world, and it makes our house worth, you know, three hundred thousand dollars more than the one down the street. You've got, you, you, you haven't even seen that yet. You don't ever want to be in that position. You need to look at every nook and cranny in that house, and then sit down to have the conversation with them. So, where, what am I going to do? I'm going to make sure, number one, that all the TVs and radios are turned off, and I'm going to blame it on my ADD, and that we have a little chuckle about it, and it's non-threatening, and I just say, you know, I literally will say, hey, you know what, I, I hate to tell you this, but I've got a little bit of ADD. Would you mind if we turn that TV off? It's, it's going to distract me, and I really want to be focused on you guys. And all of a sudden now, I'm controlling the room, right? If they have kids, get them out of the room. If they have pets, get them out of the room. I want to be sitting at the kitchen table, never on anything soft or comfortable, if there is no kitchen table, I'm going to stand at the counter, but I'm not going to sit somewhere comfortable, and I'm not going to allow them to sit somewhere comfortable. Very, very important. Also, I want all the lights and the windows open. I want as much light in that room as possible. I want them awake, and I need to be awake. And so a lot of times I'm on listing appointments at night. I will tell you this. Don't fall asleep during the listing appointment. <laughs> now, I wouldn't have this in the presentation if it hadn't actually happened. <laughs> so... I literally was on a listing appointment one day, and they sit me down. They bring me into this warm room. You know, it's it's 11 o'clock at night. That's the only time they could meet. And frankly, that worked well for me because it allowed me to get more appointments in that day. Uh, and you know, my kids were already asleep anyway. And so here it is, 11 o'clock at night, 
and uh, I'm sitting in this warm room, candlelight, music playing soft. They sit me on the most comfortable couch I think I've ever sat on, and I am literally in the middle of my clothes when I fall asleep, literally. All I remember is the wife putting, you know, tapping me on the shoulder saying, Michael, Michael, it's okay. We're going to list with you. Go home and take a nap. <laughs> so I did do the listing, by the way. <laughs> oh, gosh. Has that ever happened to you, Mike? You ever fall well, asleep on a listing? I'm actually texting one of my listing partners on the phone right now. We had a listing appointment a few weeks ago, and it was a $1.3 million house, and they had it all dark. Their air conditioning was broken, so it was, like, real warm. And I was standing there just listening to them babble and babble about how nice this disgusting house was. And I was leaning back and forth, and, he, and I was almost falling asleep. And he looks at me, and he looks at her, and he goes, you are exhausted, aren't you? I'm like, oh, how embarrassing. Yeah, yeah, it was dark comfortable and warm in the house and so i get it yeah we were tired uh that's funny and i'll tell you if it's that bad if it's if it's literally that bad and there's no way to avoid it inside the house take them outside do it on the hood of your car no joke i will i'll, I'll literally walk them outside do it on the back patio do it on the porch do it on the hood of my car whatever i don't care uh the key is i want to be in an environment where they are fully attentive to me and i'm on my game that's it's really important all right so now let's set the stage this is important as soon as we sit down, I'm going to stand the key box up upright on the table between us. I'm going to stick it right in between us, right in their face, so that in order to look at me, they got to look through the key box. And let me tell you, this is the silent salesperson right here. This says, I mean business. I'm here to take care of what you need to have happen, and you are going to list your home with me today aren't you, as I'm nodding my head up and down. Now, I'm not saying these things, but subconsciously I am. So when I set that key box on the table, literally I will smile and nod my head up and down. It sounds corny, but it works. All right, then I'm going to ask them. I'm going to go right into it. Hey, who's your first mortgage company? Uh, okay, fantastic. How, and by the way, I'm not looking in the eye when I ask these questions. I'm looking down at my paper. I never look them at the, in the eye during these questions. I want to be like their bean counter, their accountant that never looks up from his paper. And there's a reason, there's psychological reasons for this. So then I'm going to say, how much do you owe? Who's your second mortgage company? Uh, how much do you owe on that second mortgage? How far behind are you on your payments? And oh my gosh, all of a sudden, well, we're not behind on our payments. Well, fantastic. That's great. I only ask that as part of my, uh, as, part, as, as a normal course of doing business because so many people are behind on their payments. So congratulations to you that you're not. That's fantastic. Okay, makes sense. But what I did was, you'll notice I didn't say, are you behind on your payments? I said, how far behind are you on your payments? Short sale sellers in particular will lie if you say, are you behind on your payments? If you say, how far behind are you, are you on your payments? Um, they will give you a more honest answer and you will identify a short sale faster than the other way. And I'll tell you what, it's happened to all of us, right? We take a listing only to find out as we as offers start coming in that, oh my gosh, these guys are upside down or these guys are behind on their payments and they just got an auction notice or whatever. Listen, you got to get this stuff out in the open right away. It's important. And I don't care what the marketplace is doing. People have varying situations, whether they're a short sale or simply a distressed seller. People miss payments for all kinds of reasons. It may not have anything to do with the market. It might just be this guy lost his job or whatever. But you need to find this stuff out right now. All right, so if they're behind, now I'm going to ask some short sale specific questions like uh, are there, is there an auction date set yet? Uh, what make, made it difficult to make the payments? Uh, those types of things. So I'm going to find out what their hardship is. I'm going to find out if there's an auction date set and stuff that I've got to know so I can do my job right. All right. So, uh, some more questions that you got to ask. First of all, why am I asking these difficult questions? Because uh, another big reason is it's the elephant in the room. It's what they're hoping that I'm not going to ask, and that's why I ask it right away. If they are behind, if they are short, if any of those things exist, they are afraid that I'm going to ask, and they're embarrassed about it, and they don't want to tell me, and I need to get that elephant out of the room right now. Um, and so I'm going to deal with every tough issue I can right away. For example, uh, you know, if their house is just a pigsty, we're going to deal with that right away. Um, you know, so I'm going to tell them the bad news, then I'm going to tell them the good news. The bad news is you're upside down, and you probably already knew that. The good news is we can do what's called a short sale. And don't assume that everybody knows what a short sale is because they don't. Uh, now, again, that's only if this is a short sale. If it's retail, I'm skipping past all this, right? Uh, because I, I, I know that I don't have to cover it. 
Um, if it is a short sale, though, I'm going to talk to them about their options. You can keep the home. You can make up the arrears and continue making payments. You can refinance or do a bailout loan. You can do a forbearance or a workout agreement. You can do a modification. You can liquidate the house. You can do a deed in lieu of foreclosure, or you can let it go to foreclosure. Or you can do a short sale into an investor at a discount, or even do a short sale to, on the open market and get top dollar for it and save your credit in the process. There's all kinds of options, but I'm going to go through all of their options. This is the important thing. It's not about what the options are. It's about making sure they understand it and they get to choose those options. Um, and by the way, if they're doing, if they are a short sale and they're doing a modification, I'm still going to list the house. I'm going to convince them that, hey, look, while you're doing your modification, we can do a short sale. We can do it subject to your modification. And if you get declined for the modification, at least we have the short sale as a backup. If, however, we find a buyer and your modification is not done yet, we can make that subject to determining whether or not you're going to be able to do a modification. So you don't cost yourself that opportunity. But at the very least, what you don't want to do is you don't want to be going for a modification and then all of a sudden it doesn't come through and your house gets foreclosed on. That's the worst thing that can happen. Wouldn't you agree? As I'm nodding my head up, not nodding my head up and down. All right. Uh, so let's get down and dirty. All right. So I'm going to follow that Club Wealth listing appointment. Uh, if you don't have one, create your own. That, the, the listing appointment checklist, rather. Uh, if you don't have that already, create your own. Uh, if you are, I know we've got a lot of coaching clients on the call. Uh, for those of you that are, make sure you hit me up for it. If you don't already have it, you probably already do. Uh, you're going to educate your seller. You're going to cover that short sale portion of the checklist. Uh, for retail, you're going to explain how short sales and REOs are affecting their property. Make sure they're aware of this. Uh, for, uh, you're also going to talk about the right side and the left side of the packet. So in my listing appointment, uh, I bring a folder. It's literally a blue peachy type folder. On the left side is everything I'm going to leave with them that they're going to that they're going to keep when I leave. On the right hand side is all the stuff that I need to get signed by them, and then I'm going to take with me when I leave. Uh, and again, that makes it keeps me very organized on the appointment, so I'm not shuffling through a bunch of papers trying to figure out where I'm at when I'm on my appointment. All right. <clears throat> then I'm going to say one of my favorite phrases before we start the paperwork. Let's talk about what it's like having your home listed. So this is a trial close, by the way. This is a silent, kind, of, kind of a silent salesperson. We're saying before we start the paperwork, we're assuming they're going to sign the paperwork with us. So let's talk about what it's like having your home listed. Now I'm going to educate them on that. So I'm going to go through the checklist. Very, very important. You guys ready for this? Mike, you guys, are you ready? Oh, my gosh. We have more people on right now than we had when we started. Did you notice that? I'm noticing that. <laughs> That's crazy. I just I just glanced at it just now, um, and we have more people on this week than we did two weeks ago. Um, all right, so here's the checklist. Uh, so the key box, you're going to have a key box on your house. Let me tell you how that works. Agents are going to be able to access it. It's going to record who was here, when they were here, how long they were here. Uh, if anything comes up missing, which it won't, nothing ever comes up missing, but it should it come up missing, we're going to know who was in here last, and uh, and they will be held responsible. Blah blah blah. So it's su super secure. Agent showings. We're going to talk to them about how agent showings work. Every market's different. I'm not going to go into that, but you need to explain to them how does it, how does it work. Agents want to show their home. They need to be gone when it's shown. Period. End of story. I do not want my sellers there ever when it's shown. You need to be gone. You want to get top dollar? Be gone. You want this to go well? Be gone. You want to make sure I can get the home sold for you? Be gone. Do not be here when it's shown. Dogs, cats, and pets. Get rid of them. If they're here when it's shown, it's bad. Uh, period, end of story, I want them gone. Ideally, I want any signs or traces of dog, cats, or pets gone uh, when people come by to look at the home. All right, we want to force the showing agent to open up the key box. In other words, if you happen to be here and an agent knocks on the door and says, hey, I'm here and I've got buyers with me. Hey, fantastic. Go ahead and show me that you can open up that key box and I'll let you show my house. If you can't open up that key box, you're not coming in. That's for your security as well as it gives me the information that I need to be able to follow up with that person after the showing so that I can let you know what their buyers thought of the house. Very, very important. All right. If a buyer knocks on the door without an agent, do not let them in. You call me, you call my team, and somebody from my team will get out there immediately to show them the home. Literally, when you call me, you're going to hand that person the phone, and I'm going to set up a time either right then or within the next hour to come out and show them that home. But we're going to get them taken care of. But for your safety 
and for my ability to sell your home, do not let them through that front door. All right, controlling incoming phone calls, etc. This is really important. You've got to set expectations right, and you've got to control those incoming phone calls from your sellers. You know, nothing's worse than the seller that calls you three times a day every day. Well, that's your fault, not theirs. How do I avoid that? I need to get control of the situation. I need to set the expectations and I need to set the boundaries and, and make sure I'm enforcing those boundaries. So I'm going to introduce my team members. I'm going to tell them that, in, that uh, you know, I'm going to, when I introduce my team members, I'm going to tell them which team member they're going to want to talk to. And by the way, it's better for you to talk to my team member anyway because, frankly, if you call me, I'll probably be in an appointment. And I'm going to, not going to know the answer anyway. If you call my team member, they're going to have the answer. They're going to be able to answer the phone right away. Whereas when you call me, even if I happen to pick up the phone, I'm going to have to call my team member to find out what's going on because they are monitoring that 24-7 and I'm not. <clears throat> All right, email is the best way to reach my office. You'll get faster responses that way. You won't have to wait on hold. And we ensure that every single email is answered with exactly what you need when you need it. All right. Referrals. So I'm going to mention at this point, hey, by the way, just like you referred to me, <coughs> or even if you weren't referred to me, I'm going to tell you that you know a good chunk of our business comes through referrals. We would really appreciate it if when you come in contact with somebody who's thinking about buying or selling a home, if you would consider us as the team that you would refer them to. We'll take great care of your friends and we'll send you a nice gift is our way of saying thanks. Now, we don't send them an expensive gift, but I always send them something. I don't care if it's a $5 gift certificate to Starbucks. When they send the referral, that's when you reward them. We want to reward the act of referring, not whether or not the referral closes. Because you know what? It's not their responsibility to make sure this thing closes or that they list with me. It's my responsibility. But I'm going to have this conversation with about referrals with them right here in this part of the, of the checklist. And you know what? Yes, I do. No, I haven't listed the house yet. And by the way, there's a couple other spots in my presentation I'm also going to talk to them. They're going to hear me talk about referrals at least three times when I show up in the middle and just before I leave the appointment. Those three times, every single appointment, guess what? When you do that, you'll start getting referrals, trust me. All right, so uh, I'm going to tell them the sign's going to go up in however many days. You know, whatever it is in your market, just let them know how soon the sign's going to go up. They want to know this. It's one of the things that's on their mind. It's important. I'm also going to let them know that on my signs, there's a guarantee. It to, you know, there's a, a, a writer that talks about our guaranteed sale program. And I've, I've probably either at this point already had it or I'm getting ready to have that discussion with them about, listen, the way our 30-day guaranteed sale program works, uh, you know, if you want me to buy your home at a discount like an investor, then absolutely I will. And if I can't sell it in 30 days or less, then I'll buy it. But I'm going to be buying it at a discount just like an investor would because I've got to be able to turn around and sell it and make a profit. That being said, most of my clients choose not to, to opt into the guarantee because they know that if they just follow my advice, I'm going to get them top dollar anyway, and I'll probably get you between 10 and 15 percent above market value for it. Uh, and in, in our market right now, I'll need about 47 days to do that. Uh, and so whatever your average market time is, educate them on that and make sure that they're aware of that. All right. Um, okay, IVR. We're going to talk about IVR, uh, which is you know the uh, interactive voice response, 1-800 call capture numbers. Uh, we're going to talk about flyers. Uh, you know, I'm going to make sure that there's flyers in the box. Uh, there, we want to not have the price on it. No, we do not want the bedrooms and bath on it. No, we do not do color flyers usually. Now, if you do, that's great. But, man, when you've got 750 listings, you can spend a boatload on color flyers, let me tell you. Uh, I won't even begin to tell you, but it's a lot of money. And so we always did black and white flyers, and it was never an issue. Um, uh, also, I'm going to let them know that we're going to advertise other homes on the back of the flyer. This is very important. You need to call me when you see red. So what I do is I take a red sheet of paper or the last you know, five or ten flyers, I'll literally print on red paper. Why? Because if they come by their home and they see red in their flyer box, they don't even need to get out of the car to see it. But if they say that, see those red colored flyers in their flyer box, they know it's time to call me or rather call my office and we will replenish your flyers and you'll never, ever, ever run out of flyers. And folks, by the way, you are nuts if you don't have flyers on your listings. If you don't do your flyers right on your listings, you are losing thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars every year because there's business falling through the cracks that you should be getting. Flyers are an awesome source of business. 
All right. Uh, we're going to go through LP siding. Are you on septic? Did you get a health cert? Are you on a well? Do I need a health cert? Uh, are we going to do open houses? Yes or no? If I, it doesn't matter if you do or not. Just tell them. You know what to expect. Are we going to do a high bidder type style open house? And by the way, the way we run our open houses, our clients literally get anywhere from 25 to 150 people out to their open houses. We'll talk about that another time. Are you going to do brokers opens or not? Explain why. Uh, what happens if you're out of vacation uh, or out of town on vacation, or if the seller is out of town on vacation? It's very important that you let them know, hey, look, if you're going to go out of town, I need to be able to get a hold of you because if I get an offer while you're out of town, it's important that I be able to reach you so that we can negotiate that offer. So the first person you're going to call before you call your mom to tell her that you're going out of town, you're calling my office and you're giving me an, an information on how to reach out to you. Offers on weekends uh, are going to be reviewed the next business day. This is huge. Now you have to write this into your listing so that you don't get in trouble with your multiple, but I'll tell you this. If you do that, if you'll wait till Monday or Tuesday, two things will happen. A couple of things will happen. One, you'll get to have a life on the weekends, which is important. Two, you're going to get more money for your homes. Why? Because you're going to get multiple offers over the weekend. You're going to work them against each other on Monday or Tuesday, and by Tuesday afternoon, your seller's got an extra 5, 10, 15 percent for their home. Mike, I know we're running a little bit long. How are we doing on time? Can we keep going, bud? Yeah, we're doing okay. We're uh, we're at the hour mark, but I think there's enough interest here to where we can roll it. Um, I'd say just go through the easy things and get to the closes and whatnot, and we'll try to repost this up for the people that have to go. Right on, right on. And by the way, for those of you that need to run right now, you can jump on clubwealth.com forward slash 37-minute listing. Again, that's clubwealth.com forward slash 37-minute listing. Mike, maybe you can type that into the chat box so they'll have it. Um, but uh, if you jump on that site, you'll be able to get a PowerPoint of, uh, of this presentation as well. Uh, happy to have you do that. So feel free to jump on there. Even those of you that are staying, I see that we've literally only lost two people since, uh, <laughs> since we hit the 11 o'clock hour. So literally everybody else is still on. Uh, all right. Offer, all offers need to go through my team. I'm going to make sure I'm very clear with my sellers about that. We represent you. The other agents represent the buyer. Call before a concern becomes a crisis. I can't fix something. I don't know it's broken. Uh, I'm going to talk to them again about referrals uh, and the importance of when you refer people to me, then my other clients benefit. When they refer people to me, you benefit. Uh, and so that's how the world goes around. Included items, window treatments, built-in appliances, etc. Never sell personal items to the buyer. Leased fixtures. Uh, you know, do you have a leased hot water tank, a security system, etc.? Do you have a solar system that you still owe money on? There's all kinds of stuff we need to be talking about, and you need this on your checklist, or you will forget. I promise you, you will screw this up if you don't have a checklist. Uh, and by the way, you'll notice that I haven't told them word one about how great I am. I haven't told them about here's why you should list with me. I haven't told them any of that. I jumped right into here is what you need to know about listing your home for sale. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. And so, it's again, it's the assumptive close. Very, very important. So, I'm going to make sure they continue to pay their HOA, their utilities, their second mortgage. I'm going to uh, update them. This is huge. I want you to pay attention to this. This is a big deal. I want to make sure that I have a website. Now, I use Top Producer. Uh, if you go to topproducerdeal.com, by the way, there's information there. Um, but the nice thing about Top Producer and the way I was using it is they have client websites and the client has their own unique username and login and so all of the updates we would post on those websites. And so when a seller calls my office wanting an update, the very first thing my assistant would say is, have you checked your, your client website yet? No, I haven't. Okay, let's go to there together so that we can figure out what the update is on your home. Okay, let's log in. Here's your username. Here's your password. Oh, okay, I see that this, 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 and this have happened. And they say, oh, okay, well, thank you. And the next time, rather than call us, guess what they do? They get online and they get their update there. Talk about controlling incoming phone calls. This is a very, very, very big deal, and it matters a lot. Uh, so make sure you've got some way that you can update clients. And by the way, we do the same thing with the agents on those transactions. If you're my cross-selling agent, I'm giving you a username and password to that same site so that instead of calling me, you're going to that page for your updates as well. 
Uh, and by the way, I'm giving you authorization and permission to let your client log into that site so they can see updates as well. It, it really is awesome and it really, really helps. All right. Uh, now, I'm also going to make sure that I'm calling my sellers on a regular basis and I'm going to let them know how often to expect to hear from my office. Generally speaking, I'm going to want to call my sellers once a week. Very important. I highly recommend this be on Monday. Why? Because I want to be able to update them on what's happened over the weekend and if I don't do it on Monday, I'm likely to get an inbound phone call and again, I don't want inbound phone calls from sellers unless they're calling me with a referral. Then I want their call. All right. Uh, and if you're not going to provide updates, tell them that. Uh, but whatever you're going to do, tell them. Who's going to provide the updates? Very important. Let them know that. All right. So timeline, setting expectations properly. Again, I want to make sure that I'm telling them how long it's going to take to find a buyer. How long is it going to take to negotiate their transaction? Uh, I want to tell them what, uh, what to expect in terms of inspections, appraisal, how long it's going to take to close. I want to define what closing is what to expect at closing, and it's different everywhere, whether you're in a closing, you know, an escrow state or if you're in an attorney state, uh, I want to define what that means. I want, If it's a short sale, I want to let them know how long it's going to take to get that short sale approval. Uh, I want to let them know what happens if the first buyer falls through. I want to know what happens if it's a short sale, uh, if, there's, if there's agents that are going to come through and take photos, maybe somebody's doing a BPO on the property, that kind of thing. Um, I also want them to get back to my office same day with requests for info. This is very important and I let them know. If you don't get back to me same day, it's going to delay closing and could potentially result in the transaction falling through. All this time, I want you to think about this. I'm educating, 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 educating. Nobody else has done this on their appointment. Everybody else came in and said, look how great I am. You need to list with me. I'm the best. And everybody else is trying to convince them to list with them. You don't need to convince people to list with you. When you bring more value, when you educate people, they will list with you. Why? Because you're the only one that's done that and you are the expert now because you've done that. All right, so I'm going to tell them if it's a short sale, get that short sale back to me tomorrow. And then I hit them with that closing line and I'm shaking my head back and forth from left to right. Are there any other questions before we get started on the paperwork? And I'm shaking my head as if I'm looking for a no response, and they give it to me every time. All right, so now I'm going to go right into the paperwork. So what do I do? What's the mechanics of getting this paperwork signed? And the order that you do this is very, very important. Here we go. Easiest documents first, very important. I'm going to start off, uh, by the way, I'm with my checkoff form on my listing appointment checklist so nothing's forgotten. So I've gone through and I've checked everything off, and at the bottom of that form, I have a spot for them to sign. So I might have them sign that right away just saying, hey, look, part of my company policy is I need to make sure that I have you initial this showing that I've covered all of these items and you've been watching me check them off if we've gone. Can I just get you to initial that so that I can show up my office that you know I've done everything uh, on the checklist? <clears throat> they never have a problem with that. Then I'm going to have them sign the agency disclosure. Now, here's the way I do this. So, Mr. Bjorkman, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, have you initial off on this agency disclosure form. Now, I'm not going to take this form with me. You're going to keep this after I go, but you're going regardless of, of you know who buys your home, who sells your home, all that. You're going to have to have this agency disclosure form. It's required by state law, and I want to make sure that your signatures and initials are in the right spot, so that when you fill it out. I don't have to come back later on to, to pick up that form you know, or to come back and have you initial off three or four times to get in the right spot. And so now I'm going to have them initial it. That's never, it's a very low barrier of, of resistance and boom, done. Then I can go to uh, the, I'm sorry, that was the agency disclosure. So first I do the agency disclosure, then a property disclosure or vice versa, uh, either way. But I'm going to use my disclosure form first. And then I'm going to have them opt out of the guarantee or opt into the guarantee if I'm offering a guarantee. Then I'm going to have them go through the short sale packet with me, which again, none of this, and keep in mind, I haven't hit the listing agreement yet. I do all of this before I do the listing agreement. Then the last thing I do is the listing agreement. <coughs> and now I, they're used to signing. I've gotten them to take baby steps along the way. So getting them to sign the listing agreement is very, very easy at this point. And then I also have them sign off on their automatic price reductions. And the automatic price reductions is very, very easy to get signed if you've done your job right to this point. Now, some of you are probably thinking, oh, my gosh, we haven't talked price. Yes, we have. At this point, sometime during the paperwork, usually right when I get to the listing agreement, I've gone through everything else. They've signed all this other stuff. I've gone through all of that work. 
and now they finally come back, we're at the listing agreement, and now they see the price that I've pre-filled in on the listing agreement, by the way, and now they see that price on there, and they say, whoa, 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 I can't list my house for $650,000, it's worth $750,000, and then I say something like, well, Mr. Bjorkman, you and I don't set the price on your home, actually, the market sets the price on your home, because really, the, the price that your home is worth is, what is a buyer willing to pay for it? Wouldn't you agree? Nod my head up and down. And guess what? Now we've had the price session. And if I need to, I'll go through comps real quick and I'll get them where I need to get them on price. But they're already committed to listing with me. They Look, they don't want to fill all this stuff out again. I've already gotten them to fill so much stuff out that now it's just a matter of us agreeing on price. And if we can't agree on price, I'm going to list it anyway. So very important stuff. Super easy. And then same thing with those automatic price reductions. And Mike, we are at 11.10 and I see that we literally have Almost everybody's still on, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you back into the conversation and uh, take it from there. Cool, you know, and I what I love about this listing presentation, the way you did it, is you set it up so perfectly for a real life scenario. Um, one of the benefits of you guys being on this webinar is you are now officially on this list for when I move to next level training which is a class that I've put together. All my experience over 20 plus years on how to get from four, five, six deals, like we said before, to at least 50 and more. And what I, what, I, what I just can't wait to do is dissect this. And we're going to go through a lot of the psychology of this. We're going to go through how to take control when you walk in, why a seller is going to fill out that checklist, and what you're going to say when they do that to set them all up for the actual end of your presentation where you get the signature. We're going to talk about personality styles. We're going to talk about uh, body language. We're going to talk about everything you could ever dream of to walk through this presentation the way Michael's described it and get the signature because what what we've set you up for is pure success right now and i really like the fact that we're not bragging about ourselves we're just in for business and we're going to get it so you guys make sure you watch the links when you see something that says next level and more training and of course continue the social media series that we're doing we're going to bring a lot of information to you it's going to be uh continuing for the next 22 weeks actually and uh, you're going to get a lot out of this and uh and of course we're never selling anything on here. I'm trying to build our company HomeSmart. Michael's trying to get his name out there so he can have some more coaching clients. And, you know, my coaching clients are on this too, Michael. So hopefully you don't steal them. I have at least 17, 16 of my coaching clients on this call too. Uh, <laughs> so this is awesome. You know, I really appreciate what you're doing for us, Michael. And thank you for sitting in as our guest today. Um, if we needed to get what if we go to this website what are we getting here for free right now so when you go to that website I'm going to give you literally the entire PowerPoint from this presentation I know we had to go through some of it pretty quick but I want you to be able to have a lot of those items you need to know what's on your checklist now granted there are some other things that need to be on your checklist as well that we didn't have time so I didn't even bother putting those in the presentation um, now, that being said, there will be an opportunity. Once you go to the clubwealth.com forward slash 37 minute listing, you're going to fill in your email address or whatever, and it's going to automatically reply with the PowerPoint of this presentation. Then it's also going to give you an opportunity to get a hold of a video of me actually on a live listing appointment with an actual seller from start to finish unedited you'll get the video starts while I'm in my car and doesn't end until I'm back in my car at the end of the listing presentation and uh, and so you'll have that opportunity to uh, to get more information on how to get a hold of that uh, when you go there as well. that's the video I've seen and you guys are not gonna want to miss that and then probably what I'll do is if you guys are in our Facebook group the next level or Stark social media you can reach out through us through here and I can get you in the group um, I'm going to put all of my checklists for when I go to a listing appointment in that so you can download it and you could use it in Evernote on your phone which I do or your iPad and it'll walk you through every single thing you need to do while walking through the home including taking pictures and audio notes and that way you could either print it out old school walk around with a clipboard or you could do it on your phone and we've spent a lot of time a lot of effort and a lot of money putting these all together so you can just put them right into your Evernote and that's how I recommend taking listings these days uh, Realtor.com once told me 36% of the people will list with you because you have the technology not because you know how to use it I've always remembered that and been very successful in listing property so 
there's there's a bunch of questions here um god let me just kind of go i hate to i hate to not answer all these questions but you guys can totally totally uh reach out to us and let's see here okay okay i'm going to send out a link to the facebook groups to everybody um so you can join them so if you're on this webinar listening now you will get a link to both facebook groups so you can join and prosper with us all right, Michael, are you still there? It sounds like you got cut off. I am. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, no, I, just, I just muted my microphone out for a second there so I could sneeze. Okay, no worries. Well, thank you very, 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 very much again. And uh, we look forward to having you as a guest on a webinar coming up in the near future. And uh, if there's nothing else, you guys have a great, prosperous day. And reach out to us if you need us. Take care.